50th extravaganza. Depression confetti, ganza, confetti, confetti, balloon, confetti balloon. balloon, balloon, Bobby, balloon there, balloon there. Balloon, confetti, balloon. Yeah. Yeah, you just mope around, yeah. find something on your phone. You're on your phone like 24-7 when yeah. they're gone. And you just mope and you're sad all the time. Well, fuck you, kid. Santa's not real and your mom's a slut. I might have some allergies in this one. I'm going to have a couple sneezes or two. <laughs> it's either going to be a couple or two. I don't know. At this point, who's to say? Isn't a couple two? Yeah, that's why it's... That's the joke. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not good at gang jokes today. Yeah. Sorry about that. You want to talk about it? Sure, why not? Uh... How do you start the pod? How do you want to start the pod? Um, gracefully. Gracefully. Welcome to we Sam. Gracefully welcome you. We gracefully we welcome you with a graceful open arm. Yeah, one open arm. Maybe a couple or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome to the Sam and Rye Do Talking Podcast. I'm Sam. She's Rye. And we're going to talk like Eeyore the whole time. And that's Bobby behind the camera. Oh, and that's Bobby Don't. behind the camera. Don't even. Don't. You do not want it today. Trust me. <laughs> Sam will literally kill you. <laughs> I'm going to murder you today. All right. Uh, do you want to do best and worst or do you want to hop into your worst? Sure, we can get best and worst. We can get be- do best and worst. Let's we'll start this off. You, you go first. <laughs> okay. Best part. I have two. Okay. I think I have two. Um, no, I have three. Can I have three best parts? Sure. <laughs> Someone's got to have some best parts. I'm going to overwhelm this Why don't you do three best, best parts. parts? I'll do three worst parts. <laughs> <laughs> um, first best part is that we started playing the Michael Jackson game on the Wii again. Yeah, we did. I haven't played that game in like 13 years. I think it came out in 2010. I haven't played it. You can't tell. You're, you know all the moves. Thank you. It's really good. Thank you. I love that game. Yeah, the, the impressive part about the, uh, the the Michael Jackson Wii game is that it's not a singing. It's not like you'd think it would be like a like a sing along game. Yeah, because it's Michael Jackson. Right. He's known for singing. Right. You know, but it's a dance game. Yeah. And 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 you only need a one Wii remote because all you do is follow his gloved hand. Yeah. And the gloved hand is your Wii hand. Yeah. And it's it's incredibly accurate. Yeah. Like there's times where I was like, my my hand is exactly where his hand is. And they're like, we know it's not turned around. They can tell that you do like you're not doing it. Yeah. That you're not actually doing it. That's what I'm saying. Move. It's like it's only tracking my hands. And like we know that your hand can't be that high because your knees are supposed to be bent. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. It's it's crazy how accurate it is. Yeah, it's really And it's it, it wasn't until fun. I really started giving it, like, okay, I'll I'm just gonna I was like proving it wrong. Like, yeah, watch, it still won't even know. And I started, like, popping and locking to Michael Jackson, <laughs> and it was, like, perfect. <laughs> it was like, perfect. oh, wow. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you started getting, like, three stars, and you crept up on four stars. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, you did really good. It's yeah. been really fun that you've been joining in with me. Yeah. Because that game's usually a by-myself kind of game. Yeah, and it's funny because <laughs> we're playing. It, there's two players. You're always Michael Jackson, and I'm always the girl backup dancer. <laughs> That's been fun. It was really funny. I'd have to put my arm around you and then we'd... Yeah, I'd have to <laughs> do this. Roll. Yeah, body roll against you. That was good. That was really funny. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, no problem. My favorite were the slow... The fact that they included the slow Michael Jackson songs is probably yeah. my favorite part. So funny. Because you just you just get to act like a, like a background, like a choir, like a yeah. church gospel choir. Because yeah. all it is is just like... Heal the world, make it a better place <laughs> <laughs> for you and for me and the whole entire, human race, whatever human it is. Race. It's so funny. <laughs> There's something dying, <laughs> people crying <laughs> about a place for you and for me. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the moves. You and me. Yeah. We've yes. been getting in really into Michael Jackson. Yeah. Since that episode, we we watched the documentary. The This Is It? <laughs> There's been a lot of Michael Jackson. I'm kind of Michael jackson out. I've been enjoying the game. The game's been fun. That's been a fun new addition. 
You seem like you're really enjoying yourself. Are you lying to me? <laughs> no, I am enjoying it. I I am I agree with you that we can't judge him. It's been a lot of Michael Jackson. <laughs> I've been really enjoying it and one of part of that best part is that you've been also enjoying it with me. I've been enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been enjoying it, but I was just, I, I, it, it hit me the other day when we were watching the documentary. I was just like, most of our days revolve around Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> like, not just we've listened to Michael Jackson. <laughs> even when he you hasn't go, even been that much. You go to the bathroom, I can hear that you're listening to Michael Jackson when you're that having was a shower. one time. <laughs> Literally one time. <laughs> it's, been, it's been funny. Yeah, I just didn't, it, I don't have a problem with it. I just didn't, that would be like me selling you on, because I grew up on Bill Cosby. Right. And now that he's yeah. a, but he's, I, I would agree it's different than Michael, but like, the, let's say I had logical arguments to tell you that Bill Cosby wasn't actually that bad of a guy. And then, uh, and then I got, and I sold you on it. And then I was like, let's watch all of Bill Cosby stuff for the next week. <laughs> I Let's watch we, all the episodes of the Cosby show. We haven't been watching Michael Jackson on anything. We started playing the game. We played three times. Yeah. And then we watched the documentary and that's it. Right. That's all that's happened. Yeah, I know. He's it's... acting like I make him watch <laughs> Michael Jackson music videos every second of every day or something. No, you don't. It was just, it, it's just been, it's been more Michael Jackson than I've ever had in my life. Okay. So it's not a bad thing. I'm just saying, I was like, oh, okay. I think I'm. That's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> you really liked the documentary. I love you the were, documentary. You like, were really impressed and all that. I was very stuff. impressed like, with the so documentary. Cool. Yeah. It was... <laughs> it doesn't have to be a bad thing that I'm that, that I'm nearing the end of just wanting to hear about him. <laughs> like, uh, I'm at the end of my, hyperfo- my hyperfixation on Michael Jackson. I'm really enjoying the week. That was not a hyperfixation. Uh, exactly. That's why I was done with it earlier than you were. But you're into it. I like that you're into it. Whatever. Like I said, it was hard work. Anyways. <laughs> it, was, it was funny working out to Michael Jackson. And then it was funny working out to Michael Jackson again. And then it was fun watching the documentary. I play music that I feel like listening to. I know. And you never make a suggestion. I'm fine with listening to your music. Apparently not. Oh, we can't talk about Apparently things? it's been really getting to you. And you haven't said anything. I had a fourth worst part. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. You know what? Me too. Yeah. Um, my second best part was uh, you giving me an early Christmas present. Yeah. I got a little necklace. Got a necklace. Uh, the kids went to bed and you said, it's your Christmas. Merry Christmas. What do you want to do? And I said, I want presents. Yeah. He said, we got to jam pack it in if it's only a few hours. It's only a couple hours of Christmas. So we had to pack it in. And you know what? Pack it in. We did. That's when we watched the documentary because that's all I wanted to do. Yeah. That was for your Christmas present. And now you're just. I'm not. I had a great time listening, listening to it. I had a great time watching it. It was really interesting how, how involved he was with everything. It's crazy how good he is at everything. Yeah. Like, he's doing the dancing. He's doing the singing. He's correcting all of it. Yeah. And then he goes over to, like, the cinematographer, and he's like, we're going to change up these lights. Yeah. What kind of bulb is that? <laughs> <laughs> how many watts? How many watts is that? That's not good. That's not good. Trust me. In post, you'll thank me. Like, he knows what <laughs> post is. You'd think that that guy would be so busy. And uh, weird body on him. Yeah. He's got a weird lanky body. I guess he's got a dancer's body, people say. Yeah, he's pretty skinny. I don't get what the physical attraction is to Michael Jackson for most people. Like, I don't get it. It's a talent is it, thing. Is it a talent? Is yeah. it just, yeah, okay, just talent alone? It's not yeah. his face. That changes all it the time. It was his face when he was, like, doing Thriller. Oh, okay. All right. For sure. That's true. Yeah, he's pretty hot guy. <laughs> Um, and then my third best part was that we watched Polar Express and your kids liked it. And I was really nervous. Mm -hmm. I get nervous to show them movies now. I was nervous about that movie (laughs) because from what I remembered from the little bits I saw of it was that it was slow. Yeah. I was worried about that too. And I talked to Paisley about that. I was like, cause we were, we were like, Poppy, you're going to like it. We were joking around. And then I was like, it's a little slow at the beginning, but then it picks up and Paisley's like, yeah, it picks up. So she was just kind of copying me. Yeah, but, which is um, great. But they liked it. The fact that Paisley actually sat down and started watching the start of the movie and didn't go, I'm not going to watch, and then pee. Like, she watched the whole movie. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, and then Poppy was trying to get away a couple times, and yeah. I was like, 
You can go, Poppy, but trust me, you're going to want to stay. All right, it you gets can leave, but really Santa's good. coming in a second. Yeah, I was and like, she, Poppy's like, what's that? I was like, do you want me to spoil it for you? She's like, yeah. And I was like, they're about to go to the gift wrapping station. And then they're going to fall into Santa's giant spoilers, giant sack of presents. Yeah. And she was like, I'll stay for a little bit. I'll stay. Presents, you say. <laughs> I'll stay. <laughs> I also like to live dangerously. <laughs> So they both made it through the whole movie. It was yeah, great. They loved it. That's one of my favorite Christmas movies. So I'm really happy. And Poppy wasn't getting bored. She was getting scared. Yeah. Like she was like, I think it's boring now. I'm going to go. Yeah. Because they had a weird, weird ghost hobo. Yeah. There's a ghost hobo in it. Yeah, but he's a good guy. He's weird. But that he's was a the good nice guy. part. That was a good selling feature. Where because she was like, "Is he a bad guy?" And then you got to go. There's literally no bad guys in There's this. No bad guys in this. Nothing bad happens. Everybody is happy. Yeah. Like nothing. There's, there's no going to be bad some adventures, things. but not even bad things going to happen in that adventure. No, no bad things. It all works out. And everyone's a good guy. Yeah. Everyone's the best guy. Mm-hmm. It's like, who's your favorite character? I don't know. There's a hundred good guys in this movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> It'd be like Marvel without any of the villains. It'd be like, yeah. I don't know which one to pick now. <laughs> That's what it's like. That's Polar Express wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even pick your favorite character. No. There's too many. And Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is my favorite character. Tom Hanks is great. I kept. I like the bit where you where you said Tom Hanks is basically everyone in this movie. And every time there was a girl, I would go, "He's so good." Yeah. He's so good. Yeah, that was funny. I like that. That never got old. It didn't get old for me. I look forward to the next girl character. I think you only said it once. I wanted to say it a bunch. I said <laughs> but it. In I my said head. it in my head a lot. I said lot. it in my head a lot. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And do you want to do your best parts? Part? Uh, my, uh, I like the Christmas. I liked your Christmas. That was fun. That was fun. Um, yeah, and the Polar Express was fun. I feel like I can't remember. My brain's not working right now. Okay. So I can't. I'll do my oh. worst. <laughs> I was going to explain it, but yeah, you know, you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, I'll do my worst then. Sure. Do you want to explain it? No. My brain's just not working. I, I can't. I can't. My brain's just not working to the point where I can actually, like, remember parts of last two weeks. Right. It's just been a fog of depression. Yeah. So, good Seasonal. luck. Good luck. It's the season. Tis the season Tis for the depression. Tis the season, sure. Um, yeah, this never happens in the summer. Yeah, but you can blame it on the winter at least. Yeah, I have seasonal depression. It's every season. Yeah. Boom. Boom. You can use that. Even fall? <laughs> yeah. Spring? Especially spring. Spring's muddy. But like it start to uh, the birds start chirping. I don't. I don't think it's seasonal. That's why I don't think it's seasonal depression. It doesn't matter if it's great outside or bad outside. It doesn't matter what's going on. It just hits me mm. out of nowhere for no reason. Yeah, it can hit me out of nowhere for no reason. But I feel like I feel like certain things can make it like the weather can make it last longer. Not necessarily right. like it's raining because i actually like the rain right. i think it's cozy and it gives me an excuse to stay inside yeah um but just certain like if i'm about to head there and then i look at the weather it could either go like this or it could go like this oh right yeah i don't the weather never really plays a part i, I like i like all the different weather systems i'm mm -hmm. fine with it um uh like even the crap i find crappier weather more fun yeah um but and, oh, and I guess it's not like nothing caused like something, even if it's something small. And then my body goes like, don't worry, we'll work on it. <laughs> like, we'll use that energy and we'll turn it into real depression for you. Like, I don't have to do mm. anything. Yeah. Like, I've got like we were talking about how I have a guilt factory in my brain. Yeah. I can turn at literally anything into feeling guilty and feeling bad and uh, and then tormenting myself over that. Yeah, but I have, I, have a, I have a depression factory, too. The right. guilt and depression factory. And they like working together a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They like to, to offload some work to the other one a lot. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been going through the last week or so. Uh, yeah. My, my worst part? Is that what you're asking? I was going to go to my <laughs> worst part and then we could get into yours because I feel like yours is going to take a while. Okay. Sure. That's good because I didn't bring anything for this episode. Um, my worst. My worst part. My worst part, and I hate to say it, I can't write a joke to save my life right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's been really hard. I feel like everything I write down is like, and then he did this, and then that, and then he did that. Right. It just looks like a child's story. Yeah. I can't, yeah. It's just been really hard. 
Yeah. So our news thing is kind of uh, dragging. Yeah, it is. And then I haven't been wanting to write jokes just because I hate myself. It's just, it's just right. easier not to do that. Yeah. Because I'm in like a self-destructive, what's the point in anything mood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's been hard. That's also... Which is probably hard for you, too. I was going to say, it's part of my worst part, but I don't want to say that. I don't no, want to say that's No, I get worst. it. It's no fun. It's not like, and we're not riding any fun waves here. Right. So it's hard to go, I'm going to look up a silly story. I'm going to look up a story and see how it's silly. Yeah. You know? I feel like it was hard to even get the energy to do this podcast. Yeah. I definitely didn't want to do it. I know um, you didn't, which made I, me go, I don't know if I want to do it now. I, I know. But I was worried about you. I also told myself I was going to do this no matter what. So Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was like, oh, we shouldn't have left it to the last day because I like being able to push it a day and now we can't. Yeah. There's no. No. And that's, that's why it's, it's hard. It's hard. Like we both have a thing where like it would be nice to be able to do this when I have like, my weeks where I have the kids. It would be nice to do it like when we have energy after they go to bed or if they have the energy just to do a podcast. But then you're worried about being too loud. So that cuts yeah. off the that cuts off that part of that week. So even if we're feeling, but we can it, do it Mondays and Fridays. Yeah, we can do that. Mm-hmm. And we didn't I don't work Mondays and Fridays. We didn't though, and now we're here. Yeah, I don't know what we were doing. I don't know. Sometimes, like when you when you're feeling similar, you do not want to do this stuff. You know, like it's just easier if I'm feeling that way. I know you're feeling that way, so we both go. Eh. But if you're feeling that way and I'm not, I go. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't feel that way either. I don't feel that's, that's not necessarily true. When you're feeling that way, I know pushing you to do it isn't gonna, isn't gonna turn into something that you're not going to be feeling good at the end of it. Where like, I know that the act of doing this, I'll probably be giggling at the end of this. Mm. So that's probably good for me to do it. But like, you don't like pushing through that. Like you're like, you just want to push it a day and that seems fine. But then, but then we get to like the end of the week and now it's. Like this is getting released tonight at like you know just after midnight, and uh, but and I'm feeling like this, but I like it's I still ha- but I have to I have to just do it. If I was feeling like this and it was the last day, we would have been able to push through. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Who knows? Uh, okay, is that your that's your worst part? I guess so. I don't remember what you said. I'm not even listening. I don't know either. <laughs> I'm not even listening to myself. I can't wait to get to your worst part. Uh, Let's dive in. Best part is... You already oh, said I already did my best part. part. Great. Worst part is... Um, just my mood. Probably just my mood. You want to talk and about it? Sure, I guess. Um, you said this thing like last week... Not, not last week, the week before. Whenever I give... You mentioned that like whenever I give my kids away, it, or not give my kids away, but like they go to their moms. <laughs> yeah. Or just give them away. It makes me sad <laughs> for some reason. And I'm like, I should get them back. <laughs> then I go buy You're them have back. To fight for have custody. Fight for love or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> no, like when we switch, we go week on week off, and uh, and every every week that the ha- like every like that day that that happens, I'll get really sad. And you said I get mopey the whole week, and I was like, no, I don't. And then so then I was like, I was going into it good and i was like i'm just gonna distract myself or at least i'm aware of if you say this happens i'm just gonna watch it to see if that happens i'm gonna try to have a good time i'll work out i'll exercise i'll try to get some things to get my mind off of it um and yeah like you're and you're totally right like it just is overwhelming sadness yeah um whenever i have to give them to their mom for for the week uh, or not but whenever i just don't get to see them for for that this long and which is also silly. It's not that you don't get to see them, though. No, I see. And that's the other thing. Pick them up like every day. Well, and that's the other thing is that like because it makes me so sad. I know that like I'm able to pick them up early, which is nice for before mm-hmm. their before their mom gets off work and I spend extra time with them. I can call them. There's all these other things I can see them, and it still kills me. Like it still sucks. Mm-hmm. And like it, like I said, like it, it didn't hit me. Like, I think I, was, I thought I was doing a pretty good job on Sunday. Um, you know, they had gymnastics and then we sw- they switched to their moms. And then I can't remember what we did. We were, we were kind of busy Sunday for some reason. We had a busy day. Did we? I thought we did. We went to work out, but then we didn't. But then, oh, and then we came back. Oh, we were, we were out most of the day. Just 
We went to go work out, yeah. went to the gym, and then there was no food. I, I, had, <laughs> yeah, I had yeah, two coffees, mean, whatever. Yeah, and, and your then, dad's like, we literally never have food in this house. I don't yeah. know why you thought there'd be food in this house. And so I went, we came back home, and then we went back, and we played Beat Saber instead of working out. Yeah, which was And good. then we just chatted with my parents for a while. Yeah, so that was nice. We were out of the house. So it wasn't until we came back, and then, like, I went to go, we went to bed, and then I was turning off all the lights, and I realized, I was like, oh, I'm turning off the lights that were left on in their room for like they like to keep their closet light on as a nightlight and so i was like oh i guess i don't need those that on for a week you know so i turned it off and then it was just sad it was an Mm -hmm. empty room two empty rooms and i don't know it's i don't know why but it's just it sucks not i know why it's it's not like i don't know why it sucks i thought it would be great not to have my kids (laughs) uh no i know why it sucks and the weird thing is like i can understand all of it and logically, it makes sense that, like, you're going to be sad. So don't get too sad Yeah. when this happens. Plus, it happens every other week. And you should be used to it by now. It's been, like, two years of this. Mm-hmm. So you should be able to get used to it. I don't. And, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to go about it. And that's the other, the other hard part is, like, logically, it makes sense. So then I get angry at myself that I'm, like, I can logically make this make sense. And it still is debilitating. Right. Like, it just sucks. So, it, in my mind, like, my emotions are emotions, whatever. But I don't usually, like, if, if something is illogical, I can usually, like, it usually help me get out of, like, a funk or whatever, okay. you know? And it's just with that, it's like, I, there, I can't. I don't, I don't, I don't even, I just don't know how to make it make sense in my brain. So my brain doesn't react like that every time. Right. And we were talking about how, like, if I lost my leg, but yeah. only for a week on week off, like I wouldn't get depressed on the weeks that I didn't have my leg. I would just go like, well, at least I get my legs on the, for one week. A lot of people don't even have their one leg for week on week off you know yeah. so i could like i would be enjoying the time with them but instead i'm dreading the time i don't get with them while I, i'm with them i wonder if it has to do with like if you lost your leg for a week at a time you don't really have a choice there's nothing there that you can do to fix that so you just accept it whereas in this case technically yeah. if you wanted to you could go back yeah to that if yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I like, could, so like, I could sew on my leg. <laughs> so like, there's a way. But my technically, leg, technically, my leg and me don't get along very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I wonder if that's what's causing it so much is that you can't just like cut your leg off and be done. Yeah. It's like, oh, there, there is a way. I just have to be. Yeah. Like a little bitch boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or um, something. I just think that it's like. Uh, Oh, what was I going to say? Um, you're saying Because it, it frustrates me if there is something that I could do to fix something that's bothering me. Mm-hmm. But, like, there's, it's not plausible. It doesn't make sense to do that. But I technically could do you, it. I could do that it, That really yeah. bothers me. And it'll bother yeah. me more because of that. But if there's, like, like, it's like a chess move. Like, if you're in checkmate, it's like, you're done. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. And that's the end of the game. It's like constantly being put in check. Yeah, And then you're just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's, like, similar to, like, that of if anyone's ever, like, like, it sucks losing a parent. Not that I haven't lost a parent, but I was a paramedic a lot, and I saw a lot of people lose their parents or their grandparents and stuff like that. And and, um, and I know a lot of people who lost their parents, and, and then I also know a lot of people who had their parent have, like, a debilitating stroke, you know? And they didn't die, but who they know died. Yeah. And they still have this physical thing like they, they still visit, they still take care of, but mm-hmm. they're not the person that they grew up knowing, you know? Mm-hmm. And I know that that can be a lot harder for people um, to deal with because they can't grieve and then move on. Mm-hmm. They are, they grieve and then have to talk to the person that they knew that's not them anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. So that, that's kind of like what I equate it to. Yeah. Where it's, it's just, like you can't like this. I, I really wish there was a way I could grieve it, accept it, and then right. and then and then be like if okay. they died. It's like <laughs> if they died, really. <laughs> no, like I just and part of it is just I feel like a failure as a dad. The fact that I couldn't. which why do you feel a failure as a dad? 
versus failure as a husband is two different things. And I don't yeah. know why you morph them well, together. Well, I, I morph them together because like... Because you're a guilt factor. Because I'm a guilt factor. My guilt factor is able to morph those together. But no, it's like I wanted to give them the a life where they I, they had me in their life until they were ready to not have me in their life. Like uh, until they, like, they moved out. Like I would like them to be... I miss putting them to bed at night. Like I wanted, I having kids, I was excited about putting them to bed every night. Mm-hmm. You know, I was excited about all of that. I was excited about spending a month getting better at something or working on something with them. But when I get them every two weeks, it's like, or every other week, um, you go, okay, what can we learn this week while I have them? I only have mm-hmm. a week before they forget every, not forget everything, but they lose interest or whatever. Whereas if it was like, let's learn how to tie your shoes, you know, like, like we would get better at slowly and we can, but it's halved a little bit. And it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's not ideal, you know? And especially since I was a kid that always wanted that. So in my mind, I was going to give my kids this thing, you know, that I never had, which is we all, which is what whoever has kids are trying to do. They're just trying to correct whatever their parents messed up, mm-hmm. not realizing that they're messing up their kids in a, in a completely different way that they don't know yet. And they won't know until their kids are 25 and tell them, or maybe not. Yeah. Um, so no one has any idea of how they're messing up their kids. And sure, I may have shielded them from this one thing, but I may have caused something else, you know, like who knows? There's no way of knowing. And, uh, and they have a way better situation, even like this than I ever had, you know? So right. Uh, they're really lucky that that uh, me and their mom have the relationship that we do and that like we are very cordial you know and, yeah. and we we get along pretty well and that you know we 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 are all around the kids at the same time some people can't like my parents couldn't be around yeah. us at the same time as they're around their ex or whatever you know yeah. and so i'm we're, i'm lucky with that so I, I can logically go how lucky are these kids that this is a situation that happens to a lot of people this isn't ideal this isn't what you want but it is what it is. And logically, I can know all that. And it still tears my heart up every every time, which sucks. Yeah, it's like, you're well, you're you're wanting to give your kids better than what you had, but you already are. Yeah, I know. So it's like, why are you so guilty? It's already 10 times better than what it was. Maybe yeah. it's not 11 times better, but it's still 10 times better than what it, yeah. what you had. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know why you can't just be like, I, cause that, that's what I, I can't, I, I talked can't to my mom it. about this. I was like, he can't just think that he's a good dad ever. It's always like, he's the worst dad in the whole world. And he's right. the worst person ever. Right. Like you, that's all you think about yourself. You are so mean to yourself Yeah. and you are the best dad ever. Oh, thanks. Other than my dad. Sorry. <laughs> my dad's great. What was all that one in a million talk? <laughs> Uh, no, I, that's the crappy thing is like, I know I'm a pretty good dad. Like I know that I would love pretty to have, good. No, you're really good. Oh, thanks. Um, it's some part of it is like, uh, I, I don't, I don't, some, some of it, it, it's that, but then it's like also my guilt and depression factory. That's like, Oh, we're, we're just going to use this energy and we're going to apply it to everything else in your life currently happening. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and then I then I get to the point where like this is hard because I go what's the point, you know like in the podcast me the podcast or the writing the jokes there whatever there is no point there's no point in any so then that's where my brain goes then yeah. there's no point in anything and then I go well what's the point like I don't the whole job thing the whole like I have ve- I'm very lucky and fortunate with how the life that I have yeah I think I have a pretty good life compared to a lot of people right now who are living in a first world country like yeah. not not comparing to the people way better life than everybody else <laughs> <laughs> but, but like compared to like people in a pretty good situation i'm doing pretty good yeah and uh and my brain still just like what's the point of life what's the point of living every once in a while and, yeah. and i and i think part of that is um like it's hereditary and like my dad I, I, I realized I have the same voice in my, in my head my dad did. Mm-hmm. And it was helpful that he had such a bad self-image and a bad depression. And he never dealt with it. And it was always coming out. But it would always come out at him. He would never, I mean, he wasn't like, you know, I wouldn't say he's perfect. But usually when he was sabotaging, he was sabotaging himself. Um, and if he was depressed, it was, he was being mean to himself. But you could hear yeah. it all. So like you could hear him brushing his teeth or shaving in another room. And all you hear is like, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're stupid, you're an idiot. Like 
all the time, wherever he was by himself. And so real bad self-talk. And so I realize that I have that in me so I can battle it a little bit, but it's still there. Like it's still, mm-hmm. it, and, and so when I, like I think I told your mom, I was like, I really want to smoke. And she's like, what's the difference between smoking and, and like an edible or something? Mm-hmm. And to me, it's, it's a, it's a, it's the best medication to shut off my brain, to shut off all of the self negative self talk is that, and that negative self talk will stop me from doing everything I want. Like when it comes to comedy, when it comes to anything, like if something's hard, like I can easily talk myself out of stuff mm-hmm. and that's winning right now, Yeah, which I'm, it's unfortunate. Yeah. And so I like, like I, I recognize that it's a problem and, um, so I've, ta- I've contacted like my therapist and stuff like that. So I'll have like a, I'll have a counseling meeting this week, which will be okay. Um, just to try to figure out how to handle these weeks off from the kids better. Cause it's, 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 I, I think it's ridiculous to not be sad. Like, I don't think I'm not irrational by saying there's a, there's going to be a way that I'm not sad about this. No, I'm not, I'm saying bye to my kids. Like, I'm going to mm-hmm. be sad. But it doesn't have to be debilitating. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be all encompassing. Yeah. You know, and, but I also just don't like that I have to distract myself constantly. Yeah. Because I also don't have the energy to distract myself constantly. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know. Yeah. I was getting like, it was conflicting with me because it was like, okay, a week off. Cause I don't have kids. They're not my yeah. kids, whatever. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get the house in order. I'm going to yeah. have a fresh week and then like get a little break and stuff like that. So for me, I was like, okay, great. This is looking forward to this week off. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm not looking forward to this week off because it is not going to be fun. Yeah. It is not going to be fun dealing with like the you that you become when yeah. they're not here. Yeah. And that's not fun for you. So yeah, it was really conflicting for me for a while until I told you that you suck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on your I'm glad off. that you said that because I was like, I think I handled it pretty well. Yeah, sure, I'm sad, but like, I just I don't want to do anything. Yeah, you just mope around. Yeah, you'll find something on your phone. You're on your phone like 24 seven when yeah. they're gone. Yeah, and you just mope and you're sad all the time. Yeah, yeah. You think I would have figured it out by now? But no, like I don't. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get how to handle it. And I wish I could help you, but like, I just don't have that experience. I don't have those. (laughs) You're like, why are you sad? (laughs) Yeah. I literally was there to be sad. about. (laughs) I can't see it. It's really hard for me to see. Which also, which also helps because like, that's a pretty, like, it's a pretty good um, thing to have to go zoom out a little bit. If this, if you were just hearing about the situation from someone else about their kids, would I be this affected and sad for them? I would go, it's every two weeks. Like what's it's, it's going to happen again. It's not just every two weeks. You see them every day. Yeah. I see them every day. Yeah. You see them every single day yeah. for forever. Right. So like for me, I'm like, what is, why are we I, still I, and sad? I, and I don't get it. <laughs> but that's just because I can't relate to you. So it sucks that I can't relate to you and I can't help yeah. you and can't talk to you about it and be right. like, yeah, it's a bummer and whatever. Yeah. So it's just you dealing with this thing by yourself and then I'm dealing with you. Yeah. And then I don't know how to help. And I just, I also sucks. feel like my kids need me every day. Like I feel like they, like that's, that's the hard part is that um, when, when we were, when I was together with their mom, I wasn't necessarily me you know? Yeah. Um, and then when the inevitable happened and now, now we have, we, they have two houses. I can be more, I can be myself, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but then a part of me is ripped away. So then I feel like the days that I, the weeks that I, the weeks that I don't have them, I don't feel like myself at all because myself is all wrapped up in them, which is also yeah. not the best. Not the healthiest. Not the healthiest. Probably. Not the healthiest, right? But I would uh, guess. I don't really know, but yeah. But like as a kid that didn't have that at all, like I wanted to be around for my kids all the time. Like my dad, you know, was gone all the time, and I would talk to him through on his fo- on his phone, and he was good at you know if I call him, he call me back, right? But he was always in like Israel. Yeah. So I want you to like look Finland. at that situation. Yeah. Your dad was always gone. They yeah. were divorced, whatever. And you're like, I want to give my kids better. But like you turned out fine. You're great. Thanks. And then you have a great relationship with your dad now. So the yeah. amount that you're doing for your kids is going to be even better than that. Right. And you have a great relationship with your dad. Yeah. And you're fine. Yeah. Like 
physically. I know you're not mentally fine. Yeah, I know. But like physically you've done well Mm -hmm. and you've done a lot of cool things in your life. And like if your kids are, if your kids dealt with that same situation, they'd end Mm -hmm. up like you. Yeah. And you're fine. Yeah, I know. I also think, not that it's seasonal depression, but I, I don't handle, as much as I'm liking, I've been liking Christmas the last few years. Um, I don't do Christmas well or my birthday well because it was a lot of my life was that was used as like a tactic to use like to to um, take control from my parents like like for, for them to like my like my, my mom would blame you know if my dad would get me something nice mm-hmm. then that became a thing that I had to deal with mm-hmm. or my or same with my birthday you know and so I just never liked Christmas and my birthday and I always feel like around this time I kind of fall apart anyway um right. which is people go it's seasonal because it's the winter holiday depression yeah yeah, yeah. and I was like or, yeah it's, you know that's right but it's, it's not I just don't like going into it and then and then and then like I because I grew up wanting to have you know I was always flying around on holidays to see my parents or whatever because I would be like across the country and you know, I just, it's just hard knowing I'm not going to have my kids on Christmas, you know. That sucks. Even though I will have, I'll see them on Christmas. And I'll see them on Christmas Eve. And I'll see them on, you know, yeah. next. Like, so it all makes sense. It all, like on paper, it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to see them a lot. And then, and I know this is catastrophizing it. But going week on, week off. And I explained this to you last night. And let's say, let's say they're here for 20 years, right? And let's say, like, I, I'm basically missing out on 10 years but i get but you say you yeah. see them every day i don't see them every day and i don't see them you all can day. see them every day yeah and i also don't but i don't put them to bed i don't get to talk to them like you know by there's a difference between just calling them and being in the same room as them playing or rubbing their back and what they tell me you know when they open up to me once we're laying down singing songs or something then calling them and saying how was your day and they're young and they go i don't know I literally, what, did I even have a day? <laughs> That's what all the way I go. What did you do today? She's like, I don't know. I literally don't even know what I did today. <laughs> That's the conversation. But, you know, it, when you're laying down with them at night and putting them in the bed and rubbing their back and talking to them, that other stuff slowly comes out. So I miss out on that stuff. I don't think you miss out on that stuff. I think that that stuff happens because they don't get that from a, for a week. And yeah. then they have it all built up mm-hmm. and then they get to talk to you but if you had that every day who knows if that would happen every single day yeah forever right. yeah and it's it it like also, i'm done and the, th- the thing is, is I, i'm completely aware uh, like i don't want to make anyone feel bad i'm completely aware that when i have my kids for an extended period of time it's exhausting mm-hmm. it's exhausting when i have them for a week mm-hmm. you know and so there's part of it that i could be a better dad in the time that i have them but there's also times where i need space i need a break from screaming or crying or like temper tantrums or yeah. getting my nose broken, you know, or I just need to be like, like, I love you so much and I need to walk away from you right now because I hate your guts right now. <laughs> you know, there's that too. So it's, it's because it's like having kids is a very toxic relationship where they're learning how not to be the worst to someone else and they're using their parent for that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it makes me sad that like that the week that I do have them, I'll get overwhelmed. Like if that makes me sad. You know, like everything makes me sad. Like there's like, I can never be, you can never, like, there's always something that I could be working on. Yeah. I've noticed that yeah. nothing ever makes you happy. And I talked to you about that too. I was like, nothing's ever going to make you happy because right. they're just going to get older. They're right. just going to start leaving your house more yeah. when, on your weeks on. You might not see them because they're going to be at their friends, come home, go to bed yeah. every single day. Cause I used to do that. I right. used to go to Justine's house every day, do my homework over there, watch Jersey shore and then come back and go to bed. Yeah. Like that was my week. And then on weekends I was gone at sleepovers. Right. Right. Like they're going to keep leaving and then they're eventually going to leave, leave and you're going to have nothing. (laughs) You helping right now? (laughs) I'm saying that like, this is what you've created for yourself. I know. I know. And that's the whole, that's the whole thing of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard. All of it's hard. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know how to deal with it and and I'm not dealing with it well. And, uh, and so that's why I'm talking to someone. Yeah. Um, Cause it might just be like, this is it. And just, if I can expect it, then it's, then I can expect it, you know? And if, the, if the tools are, uh, you have to exercise twice a day and keep your, like, you know, keep your energy down, like use your energy. So you don't have time to be sad. Maybe that's I helpful. think it would be hel- helpful. Like 
obviously if you when you start working it's going to be helpful yeah i'll be busier but you, yeah you just, but it's you just hard i'm right in now. school and um, then but i think that like yeah like having things planned out throughout the day like if you had things to do mm -hmm. that were planned out and you can't miss them right because you could plan out to like do laundry do this do this but yeah. then your brain could be like i'm good yeah i don't and need I, to do I think, that i think part of it is just like i'm not happy where i am right now in like from who i am like i don't i, I know i'm in a transition but for me it's been a lot of trans it's been a few years of transition out from my last career into this new one and it's it's easy to to go both ways of going well i'm really proud of myself for weathering that storm and finding this new career and mm -hmm. and going towards that sort of thing and we've got this that we're working on i found a way to do comedy in a way that i like it um in a small town where there isn't that much comedy and you can't really work on something um so we found a way to do that which is all good. all of it you can go i can go positive with it um but i can also go really negative with it like it's just like this is all waste of time like what are the odds that this is going to work and, and i'm just wasting time and if it doesn't we've had fun that's like that's the only reason i'm yeah. doing it is because i have fun doing it with you mm -hmm. and it i think it's really cool that we're going to have all these hours of us talking yeah. and like in two years, like, so let's say it stops after. Oh, by the way, it's our 50th episode. Extravaganza. 50th. We're, we're, we're wanting to quit. <laughs> <laughs> Happy 50th episode. Two and away from a year. Maybe we should stop. We should get some confetti and balloons. Yeah. 50th episode extravaganza in post, in editing, confetti, balloons, Boom, perfect. right now, Bobby, perfect. right now, and boom, confetti. That was perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, so let's say, like, we stopped at 50. Yeah. <laughs> and then in three years, five years, whatever, we look back on all this stuff, and, like, it's so funny that we have all these recorded conversations. It's weird. I think that that's really funny, and yeah. I think it's going to be... I always love looking back on home videos and stuff like that. Right. I think this is going to be amazing to look back on. Okay, that's good. And I have fun doing it with you. Yeah, I have fun doing it with you too. And whatever, like however I'm feeling, usually this, um, I mean, whenever I'm, de I'm, I'm aware that when I'm a depressive person mm -hmm. and dealing with stuff that I've, you know, I, like I went through a lot with my work and I got PTSD and then I had to deal with that. So I stopped wanting to kill myself every day. But before that, I was a pretty depressed kid. Yeah. So like I know how to deal with it. Um, and, and I've learned through my whole life dealing with depression is that like the more and talk and make jokes and giggle, it gets better, yeah. which is why I am, I would love to be silly for a living. Like it's, it's nice to kind of only think in jokes mm -hmm. and going, what's silly about this? You know, it's hard when we're doing, our, I think I was telling you, like it's hard when we're doing our news thing. And then when you're reading news and it's like 18 kids killed in Gaza and you're like, it's funny about that because my brain just wants to make things into funny. I've, I've have a guilt factory and depression factory. I would and, and I have a silly factory and I try to make that work most of the time. Yeah. Um, so I know that talking helps, yeah. you know? And so this helps. Yeah. Um, as much as I don't want to do it, there's a reason I do do it because like, it was hard to do stand up when I was like this. Like I would get really overwhelmingly depressed and, and have a hard time. And it would be, ha it would be really hard to see that I have a show coming up and I have to, I know, I know I'll have to drive to go do it and I'll have a show and I prepare, but I also don't have a lot of, it's not like I'm living in New York and I have a bunch of places that I can go work out material to make sure it's good. You know, a lot of that stuff has worked out while I'm doing an hour, mm -hmm. you know, or while I'm doing half an hour. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was really intimidating. Yeah. Um, which is also fine. I enjoyed that way, but it was just like, I didn't have, I didn't enjoy it enough. Um, to push past the depressive part to, to enjoy any being silly. Yeah. Um, but I like this because in a scenario, it doesn't necessarily have to be funny, but we're just talking, mm -hmm. you know? Whereas if you're a show and everyone's like, look at you, you're like, some of this has to be funny. Right. You know, <laughs> some of this should be funny. It'd be funny. Cause <laughs> we've, it been, wasn't. we've been talking about doing like a live podcast yeah. or something like at a local somewhere yeah. that would let us do that. Um, and then people could come and buy a ticket and yeah. watch our live podcast on like stage. But mm -hmm. it'd be really funny if we were in this kind Both of mood. Both depressive. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you guys doing tonight? You guys I came out. I have three out. worst parts. I did not want to come here. My whole Thanks week is coming. the worst part. <laughs> um, I have to pee really bad. Sure. I'll go pee too. And we're back. And we're back. For the 50th episode extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> um... 
but uh, oh, I was thinking that um, the other thing I have to remember is that like a lot of the guilt that I'm putting on myself from my kids' point of view is ridiculous. Um, and yeah, they might have that feeling later that they wish, you know, they could see me every day or whatever. But like, I also know that like I, I was a kid at their age or and younger like, when they were, when, when we, when me and our, their mom separated, that's when like when my parents separated and one of my kids, like my youngest kids was even younger. Mm-hmm. And so part of the guilt is like my parents were terrible together and they made it way longer. Like they made it so much longer than, than uh, yeah. me and my ex, you know? And, uh, but then I also remember like how I, and I was the youngest and I was about three years old and I was so unaffected yeah, <laughs> by right. it. I couldn't care. Less. Like I was, and it was like, Oh, new guy. Okay. Like I didn't care. <laughs> like it's nothing. But I, and I know that like my siblings, it, it was a lot harder for them because they were a lot older. Cause like my, they could process the, the second stuff. youngest, yeah. the, like the second youngest, like my, just my older, my older sister, but she was still the third youngest was six years older than me. Mm-hmm. So she was like nine to 10 when it happened, you know? Right. And so they, they, they were very much aware of what was happening. They were aware of the shifts that, that changed. I know people that had their parents separate or divorce when they were like teenagers and they fall apart because their whole, yeah. their whole understanding of the world broke yeah. apart. Right. Where like, I grew up and I was like, no, this is just normal. Like kids are pretty adaptive. Right. Yeah. Like as much as like we were, tr- I'm not trying to make light of the Gaza Israel thing. A lot of kids are getting injured or like, losing parents and stuff like that their kids are really resilient Mm -hmm. and and uh and like they're just this is their this is their life they know yeah you know and so i think my kids are gonna be fine and they are never sad they're they're sad they're like i'm gonna miss you you know yeah but then they're like like i can't wait to see my friends (laughs) (laughs) they're fine so all the stuff that that i have for that like hurting them in my head it's they're fine they're fine all of my friends that like their parents got divorced really when they were really young they were like yeah my parents are divorced but like i'm yeah. going to my dad's this week yeah and it was whatever yeah but anybody that got their parents got divorced later it was like i saw my parents fight at 24 7 yeah and i feel like i've been through the vietnam war <laughs> yeah, of yeah. my parents fighting and yeah. getting divorced in front of me yeah that's true like they see all of it yeah Whereas when you're a kid, you don't even notice. You're like, oh, dad raises his voice and mom a lot. Yeah, like, does, yeah, register. exactly. Yeah, and and then they also um, like there's a lot of parents that say or together. Or mom raises her voice. Right. Like dad. That's I was gonna suggest <laughs> that. Yeah, it's only the guys that are raising the voice. Um, but no, like there's a lot of parents that stay together that shouldn't. That they're just like exactly. we're staying together for the kids. But and I'm then the kids s- are like, I wish. Just, you I wish. I would wish it would have been a lot less screaming. Yeah. You know, like. Um, so I get that too. Mm-hmm. All of it makes sense, which is then, which is why I made a therapist appointment. Like, why can I make this all make sense? And it ripped my heart out. And I feel yeah. like the worst dad in the world. And I, maybe that's my dad and me. It's your dad and you, but you know what? It's also your mom. Yeah. Like, um, it's kind of for you. <laughs> You're you sad for you. Yeah, I'm sad for me. You know, it's not necessarily yeah, sad I'm for those s- kids because those kids don't care. They didn't have a plan. They came in and they're like, this is the world. And I had this plan of what I was going to give them. And yeah. I, that's why I feel like a failure. So no matter like what I do, I still, f- I started as a failure. Like I, this, I failed and I can't make that better. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I can make it, I can make it easier. I can make it more cordial. I can make it nice. We can have a good relationship and good co-parenting and all that stuff. But there's still part of me that's like, Oh, I'm a, you didn't do the thing that you wanted to do. You know, that's gone. That was gone a long time ago. And that sucks. That's why I asked if you want your vasectomy reversed. <laughs> no, I don't. And I was like, that's the I thing guess I want we to can do that. <laughs> and so then, it'll make you happy. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, why? You'd give me one more kid. And then you went. <laughs> Someone else might. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else. A surrogate. <laughs> you can use my eggs. That's for sure. You can do that. You can take those. Do you want to carry it? <laughs> Having kids is so hard, and uh, no, I'm fine. I don't want. I don't want more babies. I don't. I when I had my two daughters, like I felt like I was like, there was part of me that I was like, oh no, this actually feels right. Mm-hmm. Like I don't. I'm not. I was hoping for a boy and a girl, right? Just to have, you know, the experience of that, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, when I had two girls, like I wasn't like. I need a boy and mm-hmm. like I felt very appropriate to be the father of two girls. Yeah. Um, I've got along with girls my whole life. Yeah. You know, it makes more sense to me. I can't just imagine. Slaying just, <laughs> just slaying <laughs> friendships. 
<laughs> Real ladies man. <laughs> Real ladies man, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the guys must may have uh, taken all the girls on dates, but they called me and told me about it after. <laughs> so who's the real winner? <laughs> uh, um, I don't yeah. know, but it it's uh, it's hard, and that's why that's why I'm gonna go talk to someone about it, just because like I just there's some there's a disconnect there, and before PTSD, before I like my brain disconnected, my logic my my logic always kind of drove me yeah but since getting ptsd and having like overwhelming reactions like that that don't match what what happened you know yeah um and having to learn how to do that um this has been real it's been really hard and just understand uh, understanding logically like okay i can make all this make sense and i feel like a piece of shit all the time yeah like and i get that i don't know I don't, I don't, I don't know how to go back. I don't think there's a way I can fix it. I think there is a, it's, a, it's going to be a, a shift in my thinking in my brain that I'll probably have to do. And yeah, I don't just don't know what that's going to be. And I, I don't know. I don't know. It just makes and, me not want to do anything. It makes me not want to do anything. Yeah. Um, but the only reason I do stuff is because is also for my kids where I go, I would like to show them how to do that. Like how to, follow what they would like to do even if it seems stupid Mm -hmm. even if on paper it's probably not going to work you know even if like we're in a small town doing a podcast trying to make jokes even though we're not doing stand-up we're not in new york we're not meeting people but does that mean that you shouldn't do the thing that you like to do the most which Mm -hmm. is be silly and make jokes yeah you know and uh and I'd like to show them that, like, let's just say you have to live in the world too. So you might need a job, you might need to go to school, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean you stop doing all the things that you want to do. And just because you're not making money for it doesn't mean it's not important. Um, like, you know, like Joe Rogan or, or anyone that has a successful podcast, they, they, you know, it was all stupid until they started making millions of dollars. And then it was like, how did you know it's going to work? You know, and, mm-hmm. and what are they like? And so, and they, they, all their answers, they just did it for them. And that's the whole point of this whole thing. And uh, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's fine. Um, it's just hard when you go, I, I could be doing this with this time, you know, and looking at like this, this, is, this is only an hour. But then there's editing, there's there's posting, there's a bunch yeah. of stuff. There's thinking about stuff to do. So in my mind, it would free up a lot of time. But yeah, to do what? If you if you didn't do the podcast, you mean? Yeah, if you didn't do the podcast, you didn't do... You have a lot of time to sit on your phone, probably. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, what Netflix, else would you be doing right now? Or on Netflix or something. And yeah, no, it's... You'd be on your phone. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, but then I, and then I have guilt for not doing comedy. Like, not doing stand-up. I feel like that would help keep in that zone of writing jokes. Like, if I'm having a hard time writing, it's because I'm not really, like, sitting down and writing stand-up. Yeah, so you can do that. Yeah, though. I know I can do that. But it's it's another one of those things where it's just like it's just it's a lot. Like I'm already doing a lot and I'm already overwhelmed with this amount of stuff. Yeah. So once this stuff becomes easy, maybe I'll do that again if I want to. And if I have an urge, I also have the urge. But my guilt factory is still just like, hey, remember how you should you could be doing this and you're not. You know, it's just dumb. That's crazy. For me, for me, it's like to get any respect with like this, that we're doing jokes or being silly and whatever we're doing, uh, like my resume needs to show stand up. Why do you need respect from other people? I don't know. I don't know. No idea. You don't. I don't. The point of life is that there is no point. And the whole point is to just enjoy what's happening and what's going on and what you're doing yeah. and just do everything for yourself Yeah. and fill your own bucket. Yeah. And if that's, if that's helping other people, that's great. But yeah. like, yeah, do what you want to do and don't worry about what other people are thinking and what the point of this all is. What's the point if we're not making a bunch of money? I, I know. And, there's, and I realize there's no point in anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I was talking to my friend about this because she was doing the same. She had the same mentality of like getting pretty depressive and mm-hmm. just not. She wasn't doing anything creative, which she likes to be creative. Yeah. And uh, she's like, I just don't know what the point is. What's the point? And I'm like, yeah, there, that's exactly right. There is no point. Yeah. So you have to make a point. You have to make a point. That you have to find I'm something you I'm enjoying doing this. So I'm gonna just going to do it because I like doing it. It doesn't yeah. matter what comes after that. Yeah. I like doing it and I'm going to do it. Yeah. 
and who cares what people think? She was like, Ugh. but if I post a video and then people don't like it or they yeah. see me and they go, I didn't like that video. You didn't say the truth or something. I'm like, what? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. None it, of it matters. We are trying to write jokes right now to <laughs> elicit a response from Matt Rife, which is funny. That's, and that's just funny for us. It's like, there's just something funny, funny for to us. Do. Yeah. It'd be really funny if he saw it. Yeah. But if he doesn't see it, it's really funny that we write. If we wrote like a bunch Roast. of jokes <laughs> yeah. about one person. Yeah, it would be, yeah. That brings me to something that I wanted to bring okay. up in the podcast. Okay. Um, apparently in 2018, he was roasting another kid. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He, um, you know, the Mason Ramsey, like yodel boy. No. The little, the boy that was yodeling in a target or something. <laughs> All right. Um, next topic. I'm just <laughs> I'm looking it up. Um, While you're looking it up, I'm just going to tell you. Like, so Matt Reif, they made made fun. He he got upset with a six year old boy who called him out on one of his jokes in his new special because he said that he referred to girls having rings, and he's like, just because Jupiter has a ring doesn't mean you deserve one or whatever. This kid goes, Jupiter doesn't have a ring. Saturn has a ring. And, and you're mean to girls. And you're mean to girls. So uh, Matt Reif, successful comedian, <laughs> adult male, decided to, I'm going to go lay into this kid. So he goes, what did he say? Well, Santa's not real and your mom has an OnlyFans, so she your can mom, pay for your presents. Your mom buys your presents with her money from, money she from makes OnlyFans. Money from OnlyFans. So like a tax, a kid, just let it go. Like it, maybe he's, if, he's, if you think he's wrong, it doesn't matter. Like, let it go. Why is he getting so angry about it? So I, I just think know. it's so funny. I think it's kind of funny to roast him and see if he responds. Because, like, he needs to learn not to care. It's insane. Yeah, because if he was at a roast and someone said that, like... Was he going to get up and beat him he, up? Like, yeah. <laughs> you mom, whatever. This kid. So what did he say? Oh. oh. This is not is an ad. Is it? This is not an ad. I don't remember this kid saying this. Pretty good. So this kid went viral. This guess how many videos that guess how many views that video has? One point two billion. <laughs> a billion? I don't know. Does any video have a billion I think views? So Mr. Beast probably. Eighty six million views. Whoa! On just that little clip. <laughs> My sister always does that whenever I go. Like she always goes too high or too low on purpose just to upset Fun. me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Like, guess how much these jeans cost? And she's like, two cents. I was like, it's eight dollars. It's a lot more than. I guess that's not that impressive. <laughs> um. So, anyways, a lot of everybody else knows that kid. Okay. I don't know how you don't know that kid. Um. He posted a picture with Post Malone, uh, saying congratulations or something. I don't know. And then Matt Rife goes, "Fucks on your forehead, some gum." And then the kid goes, "It's a birthmark. Not all of us are perfect." That's great. So funny. And then Matt this Rife, is a, he's a kid still, and he's yeah. A, like he's yeah. This is the picture. Oh wow! Okay, and so he's with he's with Post Malone. Yeah, and then Matt Rife, um It's a birthmark. Not all of us are perfect. And he says, "Wait, oh, okay." It's my story. Oh, sorry. Huh. <laughs> This and is then, why I don't do the podcast. And then Matt Rife comes back and says, <laughs> you are perfect, bro. We genuine was genuinely curious. LOL, I've got your new single on repeat, little man. Keep doing big things. So just like. Just retracting. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, fuck, I just shit on this kid. And it was His a birthmark. Birthmark, yeah. Like, you probably felt so bad. Like, you're a handsome man. Don't make fun of people's faces. Fucks on your forehead, some gum. <laughs> That's not genuinely asking. I know. You were trying to roast the kid. Fucks on your forehead. He's like, no, That's I was so just funny. genuinely curious. No, you weren't. Yeah. You I were trying just, to roast them. I was just genuinely trying to tell the kid that Santa's not real. His mom is an OnlyFans. <laughs> and then she used that presence because like, she's a good mom. Because at least she's finding a way to put presents under the tree. 
That's crazy that yeah. he's just roasting kids out here. It's funny. It's I've talked no, that one's for no reason. That kid wasn't coming after Matt Rife. Yeah. He was just like saw it and was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Yeah. Um, I've been trying to be on Matt Rife's side here. Um, I just like understand like he took a risk, but then the way he handled it, okay, sure, he's going he's going balls out, you know, he's like you tr- you're trying to be on Matt Rife's side in what sense? Like like when like because everyone's trying to hate on him. I don't like when everyone gangs up on somebody for sure for no reason for no reason like i didn't like i didn't like you don't like the jokes you don't like the jokes but to like try to cancel them because they didn't whatever but i didn't think they were good jokes um yeah i didn't care like people were like oh it's a domestic violence joke yeah. like, joke i didn't like that yeah. i was like it, it, you didn't like it because it wasn't funny don't yeah. say that you didn't like it because it was a domestic violence joke because yeah. i can show you a funny domestic violence yeah. joke that joke was not funny. No, it's not funny. But I was just like, and I was like, well, I'll just, we're going to go see his, we're going to, we have tickets to go see him. So I'm excited to see, so pumped. I'm excited to see <laughs> what he does and like how he responds to the, or, or maybe just goes past it in a way that's respectable or whatever. And he's been kind of doing the rounds on podcasts. So I've just been interested in watching this dumpster fire that's been going on. And he was on like, he was on the George Peterson podcast and they were having a very philosophical conversation about people's intent and all these other yeah. stuff. And this guy acted like he knew more than a clinical psychologist on people's emotions and reactions. And instead of, instead of being like, what do you think? He was like, just talking at this clinical psychologist (laughs) and be like, this is actually what I think, you know? And, uh, and he was being very all like, Hey, this is just, if you don't like it, don't watch my comedy. It's fine. It's a free world. If I don't like this kind of music, I'm not going to listen to that music. I'm not going to get offended by it. So he's being all like high and mighty about it. And the fact that this kid goes, that that joke's wrong you know that joke's wrong saturn has a ring he's like jupiter has a ring too you fucking idiot and we're like if you even if you're right Mm -hmm. even if you're right that jupiter has a ring which i think it has like a small dusting of a ring around it because jupiter almost became a star so a lot of people Mm -hmm. don't know that that's why it's a gaseous planet you know so he might have done some research and found out that jupiter actually does in fact have a small little ring yeah the majority of the world is gonna assume saturn when you go when you're making a ring burn with a planet and you're trying to connect the dots really quick yeah even a six-year-old was like it might have been smarter to say saturn <laughs> and then this all, all high and mighty self on jordan peterson jordan peterson he's just like well fuck you kid and santa's not real and your mom's a slut <laughs> <laughs> like it's just so funny this this difference in reactions i keep seeing him do it's really funny that like we were talking about that how if we made a joke about something that we scientifically researched a bunch of different yeah. stuff, like if earth had 20 moons yeah. and then we like would, I know earth actually has five moons. Yeah. And people then, don't know that. And then if you made a joke about like, that's as many moons as the earth has and people don't, people are like, okay, one, one, like, like that's your punchline. Like, no, it's five. Didn't you do the fucking research? It's funnier, <laughs> funnier if you know that it's five. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but because, I didn't. Because if he wanted to say Jupiter, like, he would have had to put that in a, it was it's not as widely known that if he wanted that to be the burn he needs to add that into his premise he needs to go yeah. he needs to have yeah, a exactly. premise in his premise or in his lead up to a premise go did you guys know jupiter has a fucking ring anyway anyway <laughs> and then bring it back you know like <laughs> yeah it would have been funny but just then. To like like it's so stupid. It's so stupid specific of, well, I actually know that Jupiter is ever ring. So yeah, if you actually research it, you <laughs> like, know. Like I even said like, there's, there's two planets that actually have rings like Neptune. I think Neptune is the other one that has like full blown rings the and the rings one. are going the other way. The only one I know is Saturn. And that's the thing. I'm also not going to use, I know that Neptune has a yeah. big ass fucking ring on it. You not still go with, it. go with Saturn. Listen yeah. to the six year old. It's supposed to be a tighter joke. It's not a, not a good joke for just the, the use of Jupiter. Yeah. Even if you're right. You this didn't do a good job. This whole just did not it's, make sense. It's unfortunate. But I think it's funny because he's clearly just getting react, reaction. He's reacting to everybody. He's reading every comment. He is he's said, getting upset. He has said before that he like he reads the comments yeah. and he gets angry. He gets angry. He gets really angry. And then he likes going specifically and hurting the person. So he'll like go and research them. Yeah. And then like burn them based on like their mom and their picture or something. Like yeah. um, it's just funny that you can get that reaction about that. 
It's insane. His comment also was like a bunch of spelling errors yeah, and was like, like missing he... words and stuff. He was <laughs> yeah. like, he was like, Jupiter also has ring. Has ring. Santa Claus isn't real. It's <laughs> called Santa Claus, yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, you were that angry? Yeah. That you were like, Bleh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Like, just let it go. If it's not, if it's not, if it's not right, it doesn't matter. And to roast a kid that didn't even come after him, didn't even mention it. Yeah. He's like, what the fuck's on your face? What's wrong with your face, dude? Yeah. Oh, it's a birthmark. (laughs) I was just curious. When the whole part is like being an entertainer like that, you know how scary it is putting anything out there. Yeah. You know how scary it is putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And fucking yodeling kid, that's gotta be scary. For sure. To be like... This is my talent, and I'm and I'm can choose to share it with the world, or I can choose to hold it tight to my chest. Tight to my but chest. But no one's gonna know the joy that it brings me to sing yodeling, the yodel, not to sing yodeling. Sing the yodel. I hope no one, especially super famous like Matt Rife, might roast me for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I yodel, and I've got a big fucking birthmark on my forehead. This is gonna go well. Like, just shut up. Hey, hey. Shut up. Imagine if Matt Rife like went after Bo Burnham for his birthmark. Yeah. His, his birth scar. That was his birth scar, yeah. I like, think... if somebody goes after Bo Burnham. Yeah. Doesn't face him. Doesn't face him He doesn't even, all. probably doesn't even see it. Yeah. Like, but well, if his, he did, his first comment like, was, go, go, gadget, faggot. Yeah. You know, that's, an, it's a, and he, as a 16 year old boy. Was like, I'm not going to reply to that. I'm just going to go past that I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going here. But Matt Rife is 28 years old and is like, Rah! I got to spread some hate. <laughs> Especially when he was like, I was a nerdy kid, you know, like he was like, I was a nerdy kid. I didn't have any weight. I was too skinny and, and I wasn't that attractive or whatever. And, uh, and maybe that's true, but he is now. And so I, I don't think you should, I don't think you should shit. Like he it wasn't even funny. And you're just shitting on this kid's looks. I don't think you should shit on anyone's, any kid's look. Cause there's always something to make fun of you for that. Like he looks like he's yeah. got biceps in his face. Yeah. Now. He's a weird looking guy. Yeah. He's he, not. I don't know. I I've never been attracted to him. Right. I've said that multiple times. He's a weird looking guy. He's to me. very pretty. Like some a lot of girls don't like the pretty look. You know. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what he's too pretty. He looks like he can't grow a beard. Yeah. He looks like he wouldn't he be able to. Like he does look like he can't grow a beard. <laughs> like his face is like plastic. Yeah. And the beard tries to grow, and it just makes his jaw come out bigger and bigger. His jawline just gets bigger. Yeah, he doesn't the, look like he's had to shave. Yeah, as the beard grows, the jawline just gets just bigger. Just gets bigger, yeah. But there's no it beard. It absorbs it. Yeah. Yeah. It calcifies into bone. Yeah, and makes exactly. Makes his jaw bigger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's what he looks like is happening. Yeah, it does. And uh, anyway, I just think it's I think it's all crazy. I think I think it, it's hard to put yourself out there, and uh, yeah. it's so funny that people that like it makes sense. People like to bring people down. Yeah. And the people that are doing that usually are just behind. Bullies. But it's funny because people will go, well, if if they're saying that, they're probably just, you know, jerks on a couch spreading hate from behind a keyboard. And no, it's Matt Rife. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, world sensation and handsome man, Matt Rife. <laughs> if you're six year old, he'll attack your birthmark and he'll tell you Santa's not real. <laughs> and he'll, he'll, he'll tell your mom, your mom's a slut. It's crazy to comment back towards anybody. That's like, if anybody sends hate and you reply back, that's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. But to do it to a kid is insane. Yeah. Insane. It's insane. It was on the kid posted that on his mom's account though. So like, I don't even think the kid sees that comment. Right. I think the mom was dealing with it, which is probably a good thing. And the mom sent that right to the news. Um, I don't know if the mom did it. Someone no, did. the mom didn't send it to the news. She just re- post, re- post, she posted re- a video gotcha. afterwards saying like, so Matt Rife's coming after my kid for some reason, <laughs> 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 which I haven't watched that video, but I right. saw the beginning of it where she was like, Matt Rife is attacking my child. <laughs> <laughs> I think she said something like it was supposed to be lighthearted. And yeah. like it's, it's, it's also a six year old. Kid. He's just, he's just trying to, maybe he's trying to be funny. The kid, maybe he's the kid just, loves science is yeah. the whole thing. Right. And so he heard about that and he was like, that's weird. Yeah. Why wouldn't he use Saturn? So yeah. he's like, I'm going to make a video because his mom's famous on Instagram. Right. So he's like, can I post this video? Cause he loves science and space and stuff like that. Yeah. That was what it was. And right. Matt Rife's like, fuck you, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah. I like how at no point he's ever gone. Oh, that was a misstep of a joke. 
he's just like doubled he down. By them he stands all. all of his jokes. He and never he goes, is like you're just you just don't get comedy. This is not, I'm not for you. Then go watch something else. <laughs> or he tries to wash it away by being like, I was just curious. But also, people aren't gonna know they don't like your comedy unless they watch it. Yeah. And you put it on Netflix, where yeah. grandmothers are on. You're not going. It's not a comedy show that says like, eighteen plus. You know, yeah. hold on to your hats because like, it's gonna get blown up. But like, <laughs> I'm eighteen plus and I did not like it. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you just don't like edgy comedy. It I guess, was for but. older. It was for thirty plus. But yeah. you didn't even like it. I didn't like it. It was for forty plus, maybe. My maybe. mom didn't like it. <sighs> it's not for white people, I don't think. White people. Yeah. Okay, if you're black, did write, you li- in. write in. Did, did you, you like, like it? Matt Rife's new did you think special? It was funny? Or did you not like it? Yeah. Tell us. Both. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> not even if you're black. If you're not white. If you're not white. Because that seems like what he was trying to go I'd for. I'd like to take a poll. What, what race did like it? Did, and if Actually, just write in if you did like it. We shouldn't be segregating yeah, this at if all. If anybody like that, if you're white, special, that's fine. Please write in. <laughs> Sam and Rye do things at gmail.com. We will put a poll on Spotify. Yeah. If you liked Matt Rife's special and you have to say what race you are. <laughs> yeah, you have to say our race, your age, and yes or no if you liked Matt Rife's exactly. special. Exactly. Race. Most age, recent special. Yes or no. And I would like this is going to be too many for multiple choice. If you liked him before. Yeah. How you feel now. How you feel now after watching it. Yeah. What is your background, your family history? Yeah. And why did you like it? Or a 10 page essay on why you did or why you didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just do that quickly for us, that would be really great. So we could get some information. So we can get too tired and go, we don't actually don't want to deal with this. <laughs> it's good for us to know. We're not going to share it with anybody. It would be interesting if there's a, if there's a majority. Yeah. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're just white. Maybe we're just right. Uh, we also saw, we saw, did we talk about this? We saw Anthony Jeselnik. I don't know if we did. We went to see Anthony Jeselnik and it was impressive because he also did a, dom- a few domestic violence jokes yeah. and you go, those are thought out. Yeah. Like he, he, he did a good job of going, not just going, if you don't like this, you don't like edgy comedy. It's like, no, your job is to sell your joke. Yeah. You're not doing a job selling your joke. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there you can make you can make a, a really awful joke funny and you can make a lighthearted joke not funny like mm-hmm. it's you can go either way with this and just because people didn't like it doesn't mean they didn't get it you know, yeah you know the way that you got it they could have got it and not liked it mm-hmm. and i uh, got it i got it too. i understood all of it and i'm not offended by any jokes i don't no. think there's a joke that i'm offended by like a topic or anything like yeah. that it's, it's not funny yeah it was it was poorly written. Yeah. And it was poorly executed. Yeah. Like, not only was it poorly written, it was poorly executed. <laughs> yeah. Like, both sides. Yeah. That's tough. And For a I, professional comedian to do that bad. You know, and he said, and he, his, his defense was, I was, this is why I was watching all of his podcasts and stuff, because he was addressing all of it, which, if you really, like, don't. If you don't care their reaction, why are you going on so many podcasts defending yourself? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They didn't like it. Exactly. Go buy it. Right? Exactly. <laughs> um, but he uh, he was saying that um, it was his take on an old style of a joke. He said it was it actually happened. It was said in real time by, a fr- by him or a friend. Like him and his friend were at a diner. This thing happened. And it was just like uh, f- dudes being dudes, friends being friends, comics being comics, <laughs> riffing, being friends. riffing, riffing, riffing. <laughs> There's a couple of friends just, being just friends. Just a couple of friends being friends, riffing. And and he said that he it, w- it reminded him of like that old style joke. Well, if she was good in the kitchen, she wouldn't get whatever. I'm not even sure what the old style of the joke was, but that yeah. it's an older type of joke. And he said it was it was a modern take on it. I'm like, all right. It wasn't that thought out to, to, to be able to go, well, I was doing a modern take on it. No. No. He if thought I, of that after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I also think himself. it's funny that it's like they all, like all the comics there go, like, you got to write your own jokes. Oh, but you're allowed to do modern takes on jokes, old yeah. jokes. But if you are, fix it. Like, do it the modern way. He did it the same way yeah. it was done before. So it wasn't a modern take on an old joke. 
my least favorite part about that was that he went, just test if you guys are cool. Just test if you that guys are cool. That is my least favorite thing to do yeah. if you're a comic. Yeah. To go say a joke and go, just making sure we're good here. Because like at that moment, if you're saying just checking if we're good here, that's where you go. I feel a lot of you pulling back. And let me, let me, let me, and then, and then you break it down to why they should think it's funny. And then you sell the people that didn't like it. And then you make it funnier. Like that's a place to actually like go, oh, I've struck a chord here. I've made some people uncomfortable. Yeah. But also to say, just checking if you, if you guys are cool yeah. is a stolen joke. Yeah. That joke has been said a hundred times and people right. think they can say it because it's not like a, a it's not, like it's a not a joke punchline. No it's not a setup punchline thing. Yeah. It's just a thing that you can say that mm -hmm. gets a laugh. That's a joke. Yeah. And you're stealing it. Right. Because thousands of people have started saying that. Like there will be trends in comedy. Yeah, I wouldn't even feel it's it's it's, uh, it's public domain. It's not stealing; it's public domain. Which but it's is also like it's just garbage, cheesy, shitty. Just don't say anything. Stupidity. If you if you liked it that much, just go buy it. Just go. Well, that's right. it. Or address it. Like if anything, when you get that reaction, that's the time to go. I thought you said go buy it. No, like go. And I was go like, past go buy it. the go public domain of that joke. <laughs> yeah, How no. do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, okay, where's he going with this? Speaking of buying public domain stuff, I didn't realize that Michael Jackson owned the Happy Birthday song. Yeah. Which forced um, restaurants to have to come up with their own Happy Birthday song. Yeah. Which is so funny because it was copyrighted. Yeah. So I guess they can use it now because it's back in a public domain. But that's insane to me that he owned right? that. He owned a lot of music stuff. Yeah. Like he owned all the Beatles stuff mm -hmm. and he owned his own stuff. So he was just... <laughs> Raking it in. Raking it in. Raking it in. And equally breaking it out. Yeah. <laughs> to run an amusement park. Yeah. It's cool that, that he had the wherewithal to like to document that whole um like when they were trying to tr test out that show. This and it was is supposed it? to be, yeah, this yeah. is it. And it was supposed to be just like all of the stuff for that documentary was supposed to be for his own like mm -hmm. library at home for that and that's it. And so it's cool that they actually had like most of the show or an ideas to be able to show like how crazy this thing would have been. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, it's pretty incredible what he did. Pretty good guy. Just to come back to Michael Jackson. You back this, on board? Yeah. I'm back on board again. <laughs> Let's go play that game. Uh, all right. I, I wanted to ask you something, but this, we're way past the time. It's been a long episode. Do you want to do Patreon? We can do Patreon. Just a quick Patreon. I can tell them the question. Okay, tell them the question, okay, and just then I to, won't answer Just to it. hook you guys. The question is, uh, I can find it. Oh, were you ever picked up late or forgotten about by your parents as a kid? <laughs> Good question. Mom, you better not sneak on that Patreon. Yeah. You have to buy it to find out. Because I've got some stories, too. Fun. Yeah, this is going to be fun. All so. right, Sam's parents, you better not sneak <laughs> on the Patreon. <laughs> Uh, all right, want to end it? Let's wrap it up and slap it up. Slap it. Oh! If you got to the end, thanks. I that really nice hope you. you enjoyed this Eeyore episode. Sorry if it was heavy. This fiftieth extravaganza. Fiftieth extravaganza. Depression confetti, ganza. Confetti. confetti balloon, confetti, balloon, balloon, balloon. Bobby, balloon there, balloon there. Balloon, confetti, balloon. Yeah. All right. Uh, this has been Sam and Rye do talking. I'm Sam. She's Rye. And we're, and done, we're talking. done talking. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Check out Patreon if you want to hear the next one. Uh, see ya. And then do we just start again? Well, I do write <laughs> jokes. Everybody <laughs> loved your podcast this week. Everybody. That's, That's great. Good reviews. Yeah. Getting good reviews. <laughs> We're at Sam and Rye do things at everything.com. You can check us out on Facebook, Gmail, Instagram, text message if you know us, Patreon, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Email us at Sam and Rye do things. Dot gmail. I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs>